Leon, in 1990, I, w I was at my mother's house for Christmas, and this poem just kind of wrote itself. I have no idea where it came from, but it's called McCorkle in the Wire. I wrote her down. McCorkle rode into the whiskey flat camp on a lathered up wall-eyed blue roan. He was talking in circles, clean out of his head and shaking right down to the bone. We made him get down. Billy Joe took his reins. Tom offered a nip of the jug. He sat on my bedroll and asked for a chew. I give him a cut of my plug. He said, early this morning, I was out riding fence. About six, it was just getting light. I was checking for breaks from the rim of Bates' draw and I seen a blood curdle in sight. This feller was laying up under his horse. They both was tied up in the wire. Neither was moving. I thought they was dead. I reached in my bag for the pliers and the cowboy looked up and said, give me a hand. I think I'm all broken inside. I took out my cutter and worked on the wire. Before I finished, the cowpuncher died. I got on my horse and rode straight into camp. His dying sure gave me a scare. Could I get you partners to give me some help and bury that feller out there? I asked if his clothes were those out of the past, if his cack was of Isalia tree, if the shank of his bit had a U.S. rosette and the brand on his horse was a three. McCorkle looked like he had swattered his tongue he stood up, reached for his gun, said, how did you know? Did he ride by the camp? This ain't no time to be poking fun. I looked at McAllister. He turned away. We had both heard this story before. It seemed that some puncher a long time ago is still trying to settle a score. Late in the 90s, they fenced off the grass. Most people thought it was wrong. Some carried fence pliers, made their own laws, but the open range era was gone. Now this fella was bad about cutting the fence, paid no mind at all to the law. The ranchers had taken about all they could take, so they set up a trap in the draw. And a group of their punchers hid out in the brush. The fence was stretched, ready to break. They had purposely not tied the wire to the posts. When they cut it, it coiled like a snake. Four strands of barbed wire, a hundred foot long, like a thousand knives, flashed through the air. This feller had just gotten down from his horse when the wire hit and parted his hair. The night air was filled with the sound of his screams. The coyote was captured, and then they rode off and left him to die on his own, laughing. He won't cut fences again. For 90 odd years now, he keeps coming back. Ropes in some feller like you. And he knows you can't cut him free all by yourself and you go for some help. Ain't that true? McCarkle don't buy it. He gets on his horse. We wait till he rides out of sight and we followed him out, but we give him some room because McCorkle is ready to fight. When we got to the rim, he was white as a ghost. Said, Boys, I'm sorry, sorry I called you a liar. From the top of Bates' draw, we could see every strand, not one single break in the wire. McCorkle pulled out. We ain't seen him since. We hired a new man in the fall, and we're still out working the Whiskey Flat Range, just as though nothing happened at all. Pete says McCorkle's run off the deep end. He's crazy and moves around slow. He drinks lots of whiskey stays to himself, his old hair turned as white as the snow.